Okay, today I'm going to be giving you a little demonstration on how to program a Firelight control panel with uh, Firelight's programming software called PS Tools. Um, and PS Tools can program the entire panel and it can also control some of the panel's functions, which is pretty cool. So, um, built into every modern Firelight panel, except the MS2 and the MS4, is this little USB port here. Which, that's what I have running into my computer and I have the programming software in that computer. Um, I should have just used my laptop, but I don't have Windows on there. So uh, this, I'm running this on boot camp because PS Tools can only run on Windows. Um, in order to do this, you have to have the 2.0 firmware on your panel, um, which if you don't, you can reflash the firmware using Firelight's PPU wizard. And if you want to check to see what kind of firmware you have, let me go into macro mode here, you can hit reset. And it should just tell you version 2.0 on the screen right there. If it says anything under 2.0, this isn't going to work, and you'll have to upgrade your firmware. Now, you have to be very careful when you're upgrading your firmware because you could seriously screw up your panel if you do something wrong, so you have to be pretty careful. So now I'm going to head over to the computer here, and I'll show you a little bit of PS Tools. This program is usually designed for fire alarm technicians, so there's a customer list right here, which I just have this right here. Um, and I'm going to go up to Upload and Download and we're going to connect to the panel. So it, it's successfully connected. You'll see it says panel connected right there. And now all of the functions are enabled. So um, these controls right here can control some of the panel's functions. So we'll just do a manual evac. We can do a trouble silence and then restore evac. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, then you can also upload information from the panel onto the computer. So I'm going to upload the history onto the computer so we can view the entire panel's history. And this takes a second. And once it's done, you can hit View Upload Files. And you'll get to see all of the history on the panel, which there's not all that much because I just cleared the history, but there's still a lot, actually. So there's the panel's history. You can see all the troubles, all the acknowledges, and alarms and stuff that's come in, so we're going to hit return to the main screen, and now we're back again. Now I'm going to show you how to download information onto the panel, which is how you program it. And in order to do this, you have to go into remote download mode. So you hit mode, and you'll see four different modes, and you go to four, remote download. And you'll have to set a download password, I'm sure by, I think it's um, just 00000 by default. And so now you hit 2 for accept download, and you'll get this screen that says allowing downloads. If you exit this screen, downloads will be disabled. So we should be able to download information onto the panel. So I'm just going to go ahead and set the date and time right now, because I think it's wrong. So let me zoom in, and we're going to hit date and time. So now we can set our date and time. It's uh, 1235, and we'll hit OK. And there we go. So I'm going to go over to the panel and we'll see if it's set. Let's do a reset. Yep, 12.36. Now I'm going to show you how you configure your, uh, your IDCs and your NACs. So let's exit out of this. And we're going to select whatever customer we're on and hit configure. And we can just go to factory default or save configuration. So I'm just going to do save configuration for right now. And you'll see we can control all of our zones. Um, supposedly it says we have 10 zones even though I only have 5. We can do our NACs and our relays. So I'm going to, apparently we have one on two stage. So I'm just going to set them all on March time. Actually I think they're already set on March time. I'm going to set them on code 3. which is also called temporal in case you don't know. And we'll hit save as template and I'll just call this code 3. So now it's saved and let's see if we can download this to the panel.
And again, I'm going to have to go over and set the, uh, the remote download function on the panel in order for this to work. So now it's set. All configuration data, and we'll hit download. And so now if we go over to the panel and reset it, I'll pull the pull station and the bell should ring in code three. Or maybe not. Apparently, somehow Zone 5 has turned into a supervisory. I don't know how that happened, but... Oh, boy. Let me go back into Configure. And yeah, for some reason, Zone 5 is supervisory. I don't know how that happened. Let's make it Pull Station. And now let's go back into remote download mode. Oh boy, supervisor is coming back in. Sorry, this is taking so long, but. I didn't realize that Zone 5 was set to supervisory. Alright, so now remote download is set. So now, let's see if we can get this to work. Oops. Upload and download. Connect. And all configuration data. All right, this should work. Let's see. Yep. All right, so this video turned out to be eight minutes long. Sorry about that. But if you want to download this program, you can get it for free on Firelight's website. And again, you have to be pretty careful if you're going to up upgrade the firmware because it can really screw up your panel if you don't know what you're doing. So anyway, there you have it.